Whew, I don't know what to watch here. Maybe I'll put on cricket. here i've been getting super pumped up man we are here nfl season begins today tempe take it on the dallas cowboys but before we get into that and all the excitement and all the pumping up and punching people pulling the dwight Schrute, nonetheless the great up hype up man you gotta do a little bit of hype up sometimes with that being said the denver broncos the final roster breakdown the preseason roster breakdown for the NFL season before it begins. We have to get into it. So the Denver Broncos, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this roster breakdown and see what this team is all about. And I'm going to make a bold call. I'm going to make a bold call. I think this team might be able to beat some other of these teams in this conference, and it's a tough division, but... Watch out for the Denver Broncos this year. Let's go ahead and get into the roster breakdown for the Denver Broncos. So let's go ahead and get into the offense now. And it all starts with the coaching staff and the quarterback decision that they made announcing Teddy Bridgewater as the starting quarterback. And you know, I think that like I get this decision because this is a team, Vic Fangio, George Patton, they're probably like, hey, we don't need a quarterback who is an elite or anything like that. We just need a guy who can come in and manage the game. They need an Alex Smith type, a dude that won't make a ton of mistakes be a solid quarterback, can get the job done. That's Teddy Bridgewater. Like, he's not going to throw it deep nearly as much as Drew Locke did to his own detriment, to, uh, you know, as we saw Drew Locke last year, very turnover prone. Drew Locke has a lot more upside, of course, as a QB. However, I do think Teddy Bridgewater is a smart move from an organizational standpoint and a team standpoint because this team is so, so loaded that with Teddy Bridgewater, maybe it gives him the best chance to win week in and week out. Rely on this one-two punch at this, or this one-two monster punch at running back with Melvin Gordon and rookie Javante Williams. Plus, you got Royce Freeman, Mike Boone out here. I didn't even put those guys on the depth chart, but you got a pretty good group. And, you know, overall, I think that they're pretty dang solid at, you know, at the running department with this offensive line. And I think it's a strength for this team. Other than the receiving core, which we'll talk about, of course, is a really, really good one. I think that is the biggest strength of this, this offense in general is this receiving core. Is they can stay healthy with Cortland Sutton back and Terry Judy. Tim Patrick, too, actually played pretty well last year. I mean, going back and watching him, not too bad. Definitely a rising guy. Uh, you know, I don't think he's a, you know, an elite receiver or anything like that, but he's a good number three to have on your roster. KJ Hamler, is he still developing going into his second year? He's, you know, and, and also one thing I will say about this and the way I plan it out is who's going to play in the slot this year, the majority of snaps? Is Jerry Judy going to take a lot of snaps in the slot because Cortland Sutton being back and then Tim Patrick's not really a slot guy. So you got Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick on the outside, maybe and then Jerry Judy in the slot. That's going to be an interesting combination. And I imagine they're going to roll with some different things. Of course, KJ Hamler might be out there in certain packages. So maybe Judy and Sutton. When Hamler's out there, it might be Judy and Sutton, and then Hamler in the slot, probably something like that. So I'm imagining they're going to rotate some guys around, move some dudes around, but they're going to be able to do it because they've got the talent to do it. So you got a really, really good receiving core. You also got Deshaun Hamilton, and then Seth Williams. You'll see how he does. What was he, like a six-round draft pick out of Auburn there? But uh, yeah, that's your receiving core. Really, really good. And then you added Noah Fant, which we didn't even talk about yet. And Albert O, of course. And oh man, that, that I can't say the name. It's a tough name to say. But Noah Fant could emerge as a top tier tight end this year. We'll see. But overall, with this offense, the biggest strengths to me is this receiving core and the running back and the running game in general. This offensive line, which is going to feature a very zone heavy concept system. I would imagine, right, they're going to try to run a Minnesota style of offense, a Shanahan. I know a lot of people are doing that now, but that's what they're going to be this offense. And another thing that I'll say is that this offensive line, the unit in the depth that they have is really, really good. Like you say top to bottom now, long term wise, like, you know, Bobby Massey may not be the answer with this with this offensive line going forward. However, one year, maybe we'll see how they, you know, go on and look to replace him. But Quinn Miners, I think, will start sooner rather than later. He looked better, in my opinion, than Lloyd Cushenberry. Lloyd Cushenberry, maybe some slight improvements in preseason compared to last year. But I think that Quinn Miners is still a better player in the system and just a better player in general. You got Dalton Reisner, who could be a breakout this year. Graham Glass now, we know who he is. He's really, really solid. Really good player there. No, well, I mean, he's a solid player. I wouldn't call him a lead or anything like that, but just a good guard to have on your roster. So, you know, with that being said, Brett Jones actually pretty decent too in, a, in free agency or uh, in preseason. You got Cam Flamin as a solid swing tackle and also Calvin Anderson. 
So overall, I mean, oh, Nutin Muti too. I didn't even talk about him, but he looked good in, in uh, preseason. I don't know I keep saying free agency, but he looked good in preseason. He was really solid. He looked good in the pass game and it was moving people in the run game. I and mean, we know he can move people in the run game, but yeah, he looked healthy. He looked ready to go. So we'll see how he comes along. Another guy that for the future of this team could be someone to keep an eye out on this offensive line, which I gave them a ranking of a 10-15. Overall, the depth is pretty dang good. Just to me, I think you need to go ahead and say, hey, Quinn, let's get you out there. Baby bite the week three. I think he should be starting there. And we talked about the running back duo. I think it's a top 10 group even. I think people are being a little hard on Melvin Gordon. He's not that bad of a player. He's actually pretty good still. He's not amazing. He's not an elite running back, but he's good. He's still fine. He gets the job done, and he's still a you know a, a solid running. He's a four-yard average dude. You know what I mean? Like he's not going to be this explosive insane that Javante Williams possesses, right? He doesn't have that level of upside, but he's a good, solid back. He's he's above guys for me than like Leonard Fournette even. Like I'd put him above those dudes. So it's solid running back. It's a really good one-two punch. Is it Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt level? No, but I think it's decent. And in this offense that they're going to run the ball a lot, these two guys are both going to be featured as well as some of these other running backs on this roster. Uh, so with that being said, we include their tight ends, of course, in that great combination at receiver. At quarterback, it's the biggest question on the offense. But I think with as we're going back to what they were looking for in this offense, we just need a guy who can play, you know, sound football. Don't turn the ball over a little bit too much. And you know, they may say, "Hey, Teddy, you gotta you gotta throw the ball deeper a little more. We gotta stretch the you know stretch the defense vertically a little bit." But with that being said, we'll see how things go with Teddy Bridgewater as the starting quarterback. There's their efficiency numbers from the past season if you want to take a look at those. Again, they're, other than the run department, they were kind of a little bit troublesome. So maybe that's what they're saying too. Maybe they can uh, you know, roll a little bit better and get more towards average with the offense. Because if this, this offense is just average, this defense can make up for it, which we'll go ahead and talk about now. And we'll talk about this defense here with Anna Donatella. And, uh, you know, it's a really, really good defense from top to bottom. There's not much else to be said here. I mean, there's really not many weaknesses. There's really not. You look at this, the biggest weakness is going to be probably the linebacking core slash injuries, okay? I know this defensive line and Von Miller, Bradley Chubb, they've dealt with a lot of injuries. They haven't been able to play together. We've talked about this group for so, so long, and we want to see it because it's it's like, dude, Bradley Chubb, Von Miller is such a lethal combination. It's just a matter of please stay healthy because this will be so much fun to watch. You combine it with the secondary that they have. You know, I mean, I'm feeling a little lucky today. You better pull him up. Anyway, did I shoot five shots or did I shoot six? I don't know, but. <laughs> Go ahead. Make my day. Henry Callahan, Bryce Callahan is in the slot there. And you got Ronald Darby uh, and, of course, Kyle Fuller, who they pick up there. Now, what they go out and do is get uh, Patrick Sertan and Kerry Vincent Jr. I love it. I love it. I love it. Plus, you got Michael Ajamada as a fourth, fifth corner. He's injured right now. Hopefully, he'll be back soon. I believe he's like week to week or something. But he's going to miss at least a few weeks on IR there. But overall, their cornerback group is really, really good. However, they did a... Again, people wondering why they took Patrick Sertan in the first round, why they took all these safeties. You look at the future of this team, and while they've got a great loaded starting cornerback group right now, Brian Callahan, Bryce Callahan is not, you know, a guy that may not be here long term. Same thing with Kyle Fuller. Ronald Darby could be for a couple seasons, but I mean, you got to look at that, those two positions there for the long term. Patrick Sertan next year could slide right in for Kyle Fuller. Kerry Vincent Jr. could slide right in for Bryce Callahan. And you basically have a really good cornerback group still because now you got some experience there. And I really, really thought Kerry Vincent Jr. was a steal in this draft. Watch out for him. The dude can play at a high level. He was put in a really bad situation at LSU. I think he can be a beast here for this team and in this defense. He's going to thrive. I really think he'll thrive here in Vic Fangio's defense. Now, a lot of players thrive in Vic Fangio's defense. But I I'm just saying, watch out for Kerry Vincent. He's a sleeper guy. I really do like him a lot. And, you know, let's go on to the interior defensive line, which is good. Now, do they have as much depth as they used to have? No, I, but I think Draymond Jones, he's, he was, you know, my, my, one of my top sleepers there in breakouts. I had him on my roster, my breakout roster, for a good reason. Because, dude, the speed to power that this guy has, the upside ability that he can get into the backfield there and be an, uh, an interior wrecker. Watch out. Watch out for him. I'm just saying that. Watch out right now. He could be dangerous alongside Shelby Harris. It's just a matter of staying healthy. You got uh, Mike Purcell as a 
a nose tackle there. So he's kind of your, you know, your starting nose tackle. And then McTelvin again from NC State draft pick this past season. Another guy to keep a close eye out on. We'll see. I want to see more of him. I haven't really watched a whole ton of him. So I want to, I'll have to do my studying out on him. And then you got Malik Reed and also Jonathan Cooper. Who, Jonathan Cooper looked really good actually in preseason. So keep an eye on him. If something does happen to one of these guys, man, they might be all right. But Malik Reed in his own right actually stepping up to be a pretty decent pass rusher. If nothing else, a good rotational piece. Really good defensive line overall. It's definitely going to be a strength of this team. But, I mean, what weaknesses do you have? Cornerback is top five, in my opinion. Edge is top five if you're healthy. Your interior defensive line is borderline top ten to me. Your your safety group, which we'll go ahead and talk about, is really, really good. Justin Simmons, Kareem Jackson combined for a really, really good duo. It's definitely top 15 range, top 10. It's just a matter of staying healthy. Maybe Kareem Jackson taking a little bit of a step back, potentially. Justin Simmons has also been a little streaky throughout his year, throughout his time. I mean, he's had one really, really good season. But other than that, I mean, other than his 2019 season, he's been kind of streaky. I will say, going back and watching him more and more, he's a little bit streaky. He's still a really good safety, though. And then you got uh, Jameer Johnson. Really did look good, too. Both of these guys, both these rookies look good in preseason. Jameer Johnson and... Caden Stearns, both thought they were decent. I mean, they didn't let up any huge plays or nothing. So keep an eye on those guys. If nothing else, if they have to start at some point or if they're going to play a bit of a role in a rotation role. I like both of them. Both of those dudes, obviously Indiana, being from Indiana, I got to like Jameer Johnson. And then Caden Stearns was one of my dudes that I was keeping an eye out on as a sleeper pick. So I think overall, this group is really, really solid. I mean, I don't want to sit here and just talk about how great it is. Linebacking core. It's it's a bit of I guess it's the weakness on this on this defense. Jimmy, uh, sorry, um, you got Jersey Jewel and then also Alexander Johnson. It's a solid group. It's not amazing. They're not going to be these stud linebackers. It's great combination. This is not Levante David and Devin White, but it's a good group. It's going to get the job done. They may struggle versus some of these receiving backs. You know the Christian McCaffrey types. However, you got Banner Baron Browning in here, who's this super athletic freak upside dude. Might even play a little bit of edge this year. Never know. Watch out for him there. You got uh, Justin Stratnard, another dude here going into year number two. More of a special team guy, which they need to improve upon special teams. So that is really their defensive roster in terms of their uh, what Ed Dantella likes to do. Cover four. Obviously, it's a big Fangio defense. Cover four. They love you know the too high safety look. That's what they're going to run. I mean, they sprinkle in every coverage. But a lot of zone coverage. They play man coverage too, but they it's a you know it's a cover four heavy system. I say that's their go-to. They don't blitz a ton. As you see, 27.9 this past year, which is basically borderline average to below average there. Uh, and it only separates between like 18th and like 28th is only separated by like, you know, five percentage points or less. So, but to me, this is projected a top five defense. You see their efficiency numbers from this past year, other than special teams, which is obviously a different than defense, but their specialty, their defense was literally top 10 in every category. I think that they have absolutely potentially be even top five this year in a lot of categories. So that's going to round it out for this roster breakdown. My projection is going through this roster. I just think they're too good not to compete. Watch out, watch out, watch out. I think Teddy Bridgewater can lead this team. I really believe it. He's in a much, much better situation even than Carolina was this past year. And Carolina was not in a great situation. It was an, it was a decent roster, but Teddy Bridgewater is going to thrive. This Denver Broncos team, I'm going to make a bold call right now, and I'm going to say the Denver Broncos beat out the LA Chargers this year and the Ram, or and the Raiders. I'm making that bold call right now. So with that being said, that is going to wrap it up here for the Denver Broncos, you know, roster breakdown and everything like that. The last roster breakdown for the preseason. We will be getting into roster breakdowns come after week 12-ish. Once we see like a good chunk of the season and I see where players are at and go through all the film and all that jazz. You know all that fun jazz. Uh, but with that being said, that is going to be it for the Denver Broncos and their roster breakdown. Let me know what you think. Do you think that this team has a playoff, a serious playoff implications? I'm telling you, watch out. I'm I'm gonna give them that. I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt of going like eight and nine. That's gonna be my prediction for this team. They're just too good, man. Seven to eight to nine win team. That's where I'm going at for the Denver Broncos. Going out on a limb there, but that is gonna be it for this one. I hope everyone has a really good day and enjoy football as we are going back and we're gonna be rocking and rolling, pulling out the Dwight Troop, getting pumped up because I'm super hyped for it. And I hope everyone has a really good day. I'll talk to you later.